Hi, this is Jing Jing Chen from the Cool Worlds Lab in the Astronomy Department of Columbia University. Today, I'm going to tell you about using Forecaster to predict masses for 7,000 Kepler object of interest, or KOIs for short. Kepler is a NASA mission to discover exoplanet using the transit method. When a planet passes in front of a star, a small fraction of light from the star is blocked by the dark planet. And we can calculate the radius of the planet by measuring how much light is dim. Kepler mission has been a huge success with many thousands of planetary candidates having been announced to date. Unfortunately, while we have the radius, we won't be able to directly know the mass of the planet using the transit method. But knowing the mass is important for us to further predict other properties of the planet. For example, if it has an atmosphere, what its compositions might be? Could it have moons? In particular, the predicted mass of a planet would tell us how much we expect the star to wobble in response to the planet. This wobble can be detected by the Doppler effect of a star being blue or red shifted periodically. But there are too many planets to be observed in this way. So we have to choose which ones have good chances for successful detection. So as you can see, there is a real need to predict the mass of a planet based on its radius. Forecaster is a package that does the job, and you can hear more about it in a video I shot last year. It is derived by fitting the mass radius relation of 316 worlds with well-constrained masses and radii. Forecaster implements a probabilistic model, which means that it accounts for not only measurement uncertainties, but also intrinsic dispersion caused by nature. In other words, we don't expect all planets to have the same mass just because they have the same radius. By forecasting the masses of 7,000 KOIs, we found that the precision of our mass forecasts are controlled by this intrinsic dispersion I mentioned. In other words, obtaining more precise radius won't actually lead to a tighter mass forecast. Another thing we noticed was that our predictions for the stellar wobbles are more or less the same across the entire range of Neptune-like planets. This surprised us at first, because bigger, heavier planets should cause bigger wobbles. It turns out this strange pattern is due to Kepler's observational biases. Smaller Neptunes are harder to be detected by Kepler, but if they are at short optical periods, it can still see them. Such a short period also boosts the predicted stellar wobble. So the two effects balance out, meaning that all Neptunes end up having similar stellar wobble predictions. We hope our work will help observational astronomers to choose which of the thousands of Kepler objects are the best targets. You can also check our paper in the link below. Thank you for watching the video. If you like it, please subscribe to our channel.